Hallelujah. When all I want is you. When all I want is you. All I have to do is raise my sing that again. Let's sing it through again. Come on, sing it again. I'm finally letting go. I'm finally letting
Hallelujah. Turn around and greet somebody in Jesus' name. Amen. Tell them we love you in Jesus' name. Tell your wife you love her. Tell your husband you love him. Amen. Amen. Are we glad to have the bishop and the first lady back in the house? Come on. Amen. Thank God. Amen. We love this man and this woman. They are the covering of our souls. Amen. Amen. We've been praying. It's good to see him here tonight. And everybody agree with me? We give him permission to come or desist or just stay home, whatever he wants to do. Amen. Just take care of that leg. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Everybody in favor say aye. aye. Nobody else's vote counts. Hallelujah. Want to say something? All right. Amen. Well, we thank God for our bishop and the first lady. We love them very, Amen. very much. Amen. We want to pray for Scott Bircher. He had uh, recovering from a stroke. Sister O'Neill put this in, so we want to pray for Scott. Amen. Remember him in prayer. Any other prayer request that we have? Let me guess them. Okay. All right, Bobby Kelly. All right. Okay. Okay. Amen. Everybody said amen. amen. Let's grab hands with those that you trust. Lift your hands up in the air and let's pray aloud. Let's believe God for a miracle. Lord, we believe in the power of prayer and in the prayer of your name. We pray in the name of Jesus for every request that's been mentioned tonight. We come to you knowing that all power in heaven and earth is in that name. There's nothing greater than your name, nothing greater than it. Your power is greater than any power in this world. God, we thank you for it. We ask in the name of Jesus that you heal those that made requests. Lord, we pray that you touch each one of them in a supernatural way. We pray for our bishop, God. Help him in his recovery, Lord. Let his leg receive strength. In the name of Jesus, comfort and strengthen them in the name of the Lord. And we give you praise. Come on, let's clap our hands and thank the Lord for it. Hallelujah. Amen. As the ushers get ready to take up the offering, I want to make a real quick announcement. Uh, that's not my announcement page. That is my notes from this weekend. There it is. Youth outreach team is this Saturday at 10 o'clock. The youth outreach will be going on outreach for about an hour and then they'll be going to get a little bite of lunch afterwards we've had three great weeks prior to this of outreach all three teams have done great come on amen everybody say we sow we water and God gives the increase amen so we're doing that on every Saturday we're going to be this next few weeks we've got uh, revival with brother David Smith our March Madness is kicking off on the 7th the 14th and the 21st of March for those weekends, and we want to every day, everybody say every day, every day, witness to your friends, family, neighbors, and people that you work with, just to hand them a card, invite them to church, just invite them. And then we do the Saturday on top of that, that's our cold call outreach, and uh, when we're doing both of these things, we're going to get results. Everybody say amen. 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 Then come in Sunday morning with your praise on, Brother Smith's going to be preaching, amen, and the power of God's going to be in the house, people are going to be getting the Holy Ghost. People are going to be getting baptized in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Amen. amen, amen. So we believe that. So remember church Sunday morning and Sunday night with Brother David Smith this week. And uh, we're looking forward to him preaching tonight. Let's pray for the offering. Lord, we ask your blessings upon the offering. We pray for those that have to give tonight. Lord, we pray a hundredfold blessing upon all of them. We give cheerfully to you. Amen. We rebuke the devourer. He has no say in this church. Everybody said amen. Amen. Let's worship a little bit. Amen. And give in the offering. You can be seated as you give. Okay. Nobody. Do me like Jesus. Okay. Nobody. Do me like the Lord.
Amen, amen. So good to have Brother David Smith back with us today. We were in San Francisco Monday and Tuesday, and we went all day Tuesday. I mean, from 9 o'clock till about 9.30 last night. Power of God swept in there, about 20 pastors, and me and David held up the evangelist hand, and the power of God met with us. And so we're thankful for that. We talked a lot about New Orleans. Amen. And the vision Brother Morgan has down here along the I-10. And so, amen. We're excited to have Brother How many of you love Brother David Smith? Amen. Come on. We think his wife Carlin may be getting in the Jeep headed this way tomorrow in Jesus' name. So she may be here Sunday with us. Amen. We love Brother David Smith. Amen. Amen. I know Brother Godwin already said it, but how many does love the bishop? First lady, huh? I'm glad they're here. I mean, that's Brother Godwin, Sister Godwin, and those boys, huh? And we have, we was having fun, you know, hanging out. I can't go to bed early, so I went to bed about 12.30 or 12.40. Me and him got up at 2.45. He grunted and groaned and all. I said, come on, baby, you're old, but it's okay. I'll help you. I'm kidding. But we made it on in here having fun. Look at your neighbor. Tell him you look better than I do. Some of you might have to ask Jesus to forgive you, but it sure is fun, ain't it? Yeah. Um, let me, why don't, why don't you go ahead and be seated? Let me talk about a couple things. Uh, previously, during the March Madness, we normally would break up into teams, and uh, we've had a few uh, questions about that, but uh, me and Bishop were speaking. Um, and here's the deal we already have uh, four outreach teams, we have four outreach captains i see uh one two the outreach captains if you're here tonight would you lift your hand i seen you i know brother rigos is in the back and uh sis donna and then we got uh, another lady and brother lewis so we have four teams and so we're already going out on saturday we probably don't tell everybody but we're passing out about 250 tracks or more every saturday it's taken less than an hour and we're already seeing results of people coming receiving the gift of the holy ghost being baptized in jesus name so that's one form of our outreach but for the march madness what we're going to do is ask the same team captains with their team to talk to them and then whoever's maybe in their section they, you know, you might or you haven't been picked up on a team. We're going to continue to do the in reach. That's the My Five cards. The hostess have been handing them out. How many's been getting your My Five cards every week, huh? If you haven't been getting them, shame on you, and we'll make sure we, let, we double up. We'll give you My Ten before you leave tonight. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So the My Five card is, that's our in-reach. And the reason I called it in-reach is because it's talking to friends, family, neighbors, and coworkers, people that you speak to all the time. So if our team leaders will, will uh, put an emphasis on our in-reach, and then here's what's going to happen. I know how March Madness goes. People really start pushing hard to bring their friends, family, neighbors, coworkers. So those folks will count. Uh, for the team that you are on. And if we have people that come uh, from the outreach effort, and we will, uh, we'll just divide them up evenly and fairly, and then to God be the glory, okay? It's not about numbers, it's about souls, all right? And so... For the, you know, and I know it's a little different because normally we really focused on March Madness to do our outreach to carry us through the year for the newcomers, the new baptisms, the new Bible studies. But we are going to do March Madness till Jesus comes. We're going. That's called outreach. We're going to do outreach until the Lord comes. All right. Now, if you've already been on outreach, raise your hand. You've already, your teams already went out. Look at that. Was it easy? Was it fun? Would you do it again? Good. You're on for next month. And uh, so that's how that works. So uh, anyway, uh, for the ones that have not uh, got on a team, and, and you say, well, man, I, I didn't get on a team because each team captain only picked 10 people, and we did that for a purpose because that way we just kind of wanted to get it implemented, and then, uh, you know, we're just going to let whoever wants to add on. So if you haven't, been to, uh, picked to be on a team 
okay? Then find one of the team captains that you like or the, the people that you hang out with you and say, hey, I'm going to go with y'all when it's your time because you're only having to go out one Saturday a month. It's simple for one hour. Am I right? Just doing about an hour. About an hour. Ma'am? Oh, my Lord. Well, they, they're a little faster than the norm, okay? Took them about 15 or so minutes. Now, I know what some people say. Well, why would I only come out for 15 minutes? Well, since you're so spiritual, it's okay. We have an extra 500 for you. If you want to hang out there for another hour, my God. And if you're really spiritual, we got a box. You can stay out there all month, and uh, we'll, we'll bring you a sandwich. So, okay, so just, just have fun and work with it. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. Let's have fun. So, so team captains, meet with your team, pump them up. I know you've been saying, don't forget our Saturday, don't forget our Saturday. But for the next few weeks, you got to say, don't forget every day. And you know what's going to happen? Outreach is not going to be a Saturday event for West Bank. Outreach is going to be a lifestyle. Outreach is going to be a lifestyle. It's going to be something that happens every day. I, I was just in a church Sunday and, um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach a little bit tonight something that I really felt like the Lord dropped in my spirit this week. And, and if you'll hang in with me, y'all know I'm not a good teacher. I like to scream and holler, but I'm going to try to do my best at it, okay? All right? And if not, come back Sunday. We'll scream and holler, and you think I'm preaching. And so we'll have the time of our life. And so the deal is, but this one church that I go to, they got about 800 people in that building. Me and Brother Godwin has been going to that church for many, many, many years, and it had went actually to around uh, less than 200. And But the man of God, uh, the new man of God there, uh, just began to push, and, and, and he just started something totally different. I was there Sunday. Uh, we had uh, a little over probably close to, well, it was. It was, it was 800 and a few. And, uh, and I'm thinking in my mind, the, how in the world is, is, man, 800, we're in the middle of pandemic. I only seen one mask, and I think that's because somebody had dropped it on the floor. And um, I'm just being honest. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm thinking that, and I began to talk to him, and he reminded me of things that I used to say, like outreach becomes a lifestyle. He said, I probably got five or 600 people here that do it every day, and they bring people every week. And he said, and here we are today. So you know what's about to happen, West Bank? It's about to become a lifestyle. Huh? And you know what? It's going to be easy, and, we're, and God's going to get the glory, and we're going to be rewarded for reaching the loss. So again, team captains, pump your team up. Remember, in reach for the next few weeks, friends, families, neighbors, coworkers, and again, when they come with you, you're going to get your, your credit. We're going to keep the numbers up of what's happening. If they're just a walk-in, all right, and I don't want to say it like that, but that's how I'm saying they, they come in from a door hanger or come in, we'll find out the, uh, the hostess. Isn't the hostess been doing a phenomenal job? I've been hearing, okay? I've been calling and asking. So, you know what? They'll make sure, and they might say, well, I am a guest of Melissa. So, you know, she gets the credit. If they come in, how did you come? I got a door hanger. I was just passing by, and an angel of the Lord screamed my name and said, behold, thou is their church, and I just came in. Uh, take a selfie with them, and then let, we'll, we'll, yeah, that way we can say, wow, what about that? And then uh, it'll be fun, and then we can assign them to someone and we're going to have a great time. Bishop, is that okay with you? You're all well? All right. As long as Bishop's happy, uh, I'm happy. Y'all happy? Okay. All in favor, say aye. aye. All right. rest of y'all don't count, and we love Jesus. All right. I, I'm just kidding. That's how we do it. I really did. I, I spent um, this past week a little time with the Lord, and because I knew I was coming, and I, I just want us uh, to, be, to be prepared. And I know what people are saying. I, I, I'm not going to talk about pandemic. I'm not going to talk about all the mess we've been through. But there is a, such a shaking in the atmosphere that I want us to be prepared because I know this is going to sound rude and I know I'm live and I know my wife's already warned me, but I can't help it. Not all places are going to be prepared for the harvest. Not all places are going to be prepared for the harvest. But there's going to be a great harvest on the West Bank. There's going to be a great harvest in the New Orleans area, and we're going to be a part of that. So tonight I want to talk a little bit about the altar, not altar working, okay, about the altar. 
I actually just said my altar. So I want you to just make it personal for you, all right? Why don't we just ask the Lord right now to open our spirits to the word of the Lord. Could we do that right now? Jesus, I'm asking you, Lord, let my spirit be open. God, I'm believing and standing upon your words. God, I'm asking right now for you to touch each and every person. Let the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost come and let it rest. And God, we're going to give you honor and praise and glory in Jesus' name. I'm going to, everybody say amen. We'll go to 1 Kings 18 and 21. Y'all know I'm not the best reader, but we just got to do it this way. So 1 Kings 18 and 21, and we're going to read down to about 30. Thank you for standing um, for the reading of the word of the Lord. And the Bible said, and Elijah came into all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? He said, If the Lord be God, he said, Follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. The Bible said, he said, let them therefore give us two bullets. He said, and let them choose one for themselves and cut it into pieces, lay it on wood and put no fire under, and I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. The Bible said, and he called ye upon the name of the Lord, and call ye on the name of your God. He said, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. And Elijah said in the prophet of Baal, he said, choose you one bullock for yourself and dress it first, for ye are many, and call upon the name of your gods and put no fire under. And they took the bullock, which was given them, they dressed it, and they called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us, but here was no voice nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar, which was made. We're almost done. We're going to go down to 30. We're going to read down to 30. 27. The Bible said, and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked him and said, cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he's taken, he might be pursuing, he might be on a journey, he might be pre-aventured, he could be sleeping, he must be awake. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lances till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass that when midday was past and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening of the sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any answer nor any that regarded. And Elijah said to all the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and here we go. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, which was broken down. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, which was broken down. We're going to just teach a little bit, talk a little bit, preach a little bit about my altar. Is that all right? Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you don't mind. Wow, wow, wow. Little, little nervous here teaching in front of my buddy because his brother Godwin, a phenomenal teacher, huh? a man of the word, one of the best. You can be seated. The word altar is mentioned sometime 387 times in the Bible, and is, uh, its significance is, is that we can no longer overlook the importance of the altar. Now, I don't want you to look at something different. I know we're praying at 6 o'clock, and I know we're, we're praying, but just hang in here with me just for a moment. So we cannot overlook the importance of the altar. In fact, you have to have an altar in your life. you got to have an altar in your home. You've got to have an altar in the house of God, in that altar. I'm not talking about the physical. I'm talking about in the prayer room. In fact, God... The the way I can see it that he only taught one man in the Bible how to build a 
altar, Adam. But then after that, men taught men how to build altars. In fact, an altar was a place of memorials. It was a place where you could come and commune with God. In fact, it was a place that when you were done at the altar, you knew something had changed in your life. The word altar, it means to cause to change. It means to make a difference. It means to cause a, a transformation. In fact, Adam, he began to build an altar having Bethel to the west and Hai to the east. And Hai meant ruin or it meant heap. So Abraham was leaving behind the ruins, but he was on the way to the house of God, but he stopped and built himself an altar. Can I tell somebody in the house, you'll get it in a minute. I believe that it seems like to me that we need to stop by the altar or we need to pass by the altar before we ever get to the house of the Lord got to have an altar in your life. In fact, we must have an altar outside of the house of God because you're going to have to have a personal altar in your life. And now, this is going to sound rude, but I just want to put it uh, home a little bit. If the only altar you have is inside the church, I promise you, you're really not going to have much of a walk with God. If the only time you pray and you talk to the Lord, you're not going to have much of a relationship with the Lord. You are, are not going to be able to withstand the storm. You're always going to be tossed to and fro finding no rest. In fact, there's not going to be any peace. There's not going to be any satisfaction. I've learned a little bit. I, I was evangelizing and having fun and I moved in faith, but uh, in the last four years, I learned about building an altar for myself. I, I'm with a man and a woman that believes in praying and he said Dave oh boy you don't know how to pray but I'm going to teach you how to pray you're going to sit right here and I'm going to teach you how to get a hold of God and build an altar in your house I'm telling somebody in the Holy Ghost so boy I feel him right now you're going to have to have an altar in your house you need an altar in your car you need an altar on your job you got to be able to say God I'm here now and I've got to have have some help right now you got to have more than that altar when you come to church Noah had an altar before he had a home Noah had an altar before he had a home God smelling the sweet savor of the sacrifice on the altar and he made a covenant with man that he would never curse the ground again think of what an altar can do in our lives. Think of the authority we can have with God when we have an altar in our lives. Think about the power you can possess when you have a personal altar with God, when you begin to speak and he begins to answer and move on your behalf. Aren't you glad that God don't answer just when you come to church, but he can answer when you're in your car? When you're in your prayer room, when you, when, you, when you just have to stop and drop down and say, you know what, God, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's coming against me, but God, I, I've got to have some help right now. That's because you've learned how to get an altar built before the Lord. Genesis 28, Jacob dreams and he builds a pillar and he pours oil on it. And the pillar was a type of worship and as Brother Godwin has taught that oil was a type of the spirit in Genesis 35. God sends him back to Bethel and he tells him to build an altar. Can I, can I tell the church and we're doing good uh, right now and, and it feels good in the house right now and the spirit of liberty is real free right now but I just want to let us know you can get so comfortable and having good church that you forget the purpose. Woo, we can get so comfortable feeling good that we forget our purpose in the house of God. Listen, you can have worship down. You can have a beautiful building. You can have everything in order. You can have everybody in their places. Uh, you can have the best of the best. Uh, and you can even sometime have uh, some style of a move of God. Uh, but at some point, uh, you're going to have to stop and you're going to have to build an altar. You go, I'm telling you, just hear me now. I'm, 
think, you know why we've made it this far? Because most of us have an altar in this house. Woo. I know people falling by the wayside, Bishop. I've been hearing and hearing and hearing. I travel the world, and they're going, man, what do we do? Our, our, our church is in shock. Our, our church is in this. And I said, there's a difference uh, in pushing people and leading people. Aren't you glad that you got a praying man of God? Aren't you glad that, and I know he had knee surgery, but before it, aren't you glad that at 6 o'clock that man of God was back there at the altar? He was praying and saying, God, I'm going back to the thing that I know is going to change my world. I'm going back to the thing. He's not doing it for personal gain. He's doing it because people are lost in West Bank. He's doing it because people are lost in this region. I'm telling West Bank, I'm calling you to prayer. I'm calling you to build an altar. I'm calling you to say, come hell or high water, I'm going to pray. If you can't say nothing else, just say the name Jesus. Very few churches have prayer rooms anymore. It's amazing. Then when you go to them, all you hear is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. It's amazing. Folk don't know how to pray. They can quote movies. Tell you what Fox said that morning. But can't remember what chapter we read. We ain't going to reach the world by patty cake in church. He said, hey, man, Brother Smith, you normally positive. I am being positive. I'm ready to fill this house to capacity. Not because I want to say, look what West Bank's done. Because I want to look at the devil and say, you're nothing but a liar. You're nothing but a deceiver. You said my baby wasn't coming home, and here they are. You said my friends wasn't going to make it, and here they are. You said my neighbor wasn't going to do it, but here they are. You got to have an altar. Don't matter if you start off with a minute. A minute's better than nothing. When I got sick and somebody called me and prayed for me that don't like me, I thought to myself, I just wanted, that I didn't know if they was calling to see if I was really going to die or they really wanted to pray for me. And I thought to myself, a bad prayer is better than no prayer at all. I said, pray on, brother. <laughs> I just had to make sure I wasn't going to receive it if he said something bad. I'm transparent. I don't care. <laughs> I'm, I'm being up front. But, but, I, but we, you got to learn. You got. You know what? Can I? Can I be honest, church? Praying ain't easy. Praying ain't fun. You you got to purposely make time to pray. Do you hear me? You got to purposely make time to pray. We pray every night at my house. I normally fall asleep, but my wife keeps it on. That's good. She's raising them kids. She's doing a great job. But I'm telling you, every night at my house, they all got to quit whatever they're doing. We got to converge uh, either in the bed. We all up or we got to go to the living room and my wife little drill sergeant she just keeps on pushing we gonna pray we're not gonna just oh ma'am i lay me down to sleep uh-uh we gonna pray until everybody in the house is talking in tongues you say, why is that? Because tongues is the refreshing of the Holy Ghost. I cannot just go ahead and tell it. If you're not talking in tongues every day, something's wrong with the relationship with God. When you got an altar and you start praying, you're going to begin in the spirit. And when you get in the spirit, you're going to begin to change things. And when you begin to talk in tongues, uh, the devil said, what's he say? What's happening? What's going on? He understands that tongue, but the enemy doesn't like it when you do it. Enemy ain't crazy, but when you pray in the Holy Ghost and you build that altar, something gonna happen. I know Brother Bob and Sister Ted, they big old workout people, you know. Boy, they throwing tires and doing stuff. Just trust me. They didn't start that. They didn't wake up one morning and say, that's it. Charles Atlas is coming back to you. Schwarzenegger will be here next week. It's been a process. When I heard they was working out, I cheated. I said, Jesus, for every push-up Brother Bob and them do, count it for me, Lord. I've been losing weight. I'm looking good. Thanks, Bob. But it didn't start overnight. Do you hear me? It took a process. 
Church, I'm not rebuking, but here's what I'm saying. We're going to have to have such a relationship with God that at any given moment when something is standing in front of you that needs a a touch from God, you're going to have to have such an in tune with the Lord that you can say, it's all right, I'll pray for you right now. Bam, and it'll happen. And I'll pray for you right now, and bam, it'll happen. When you have an altar, it's not hard to enter into the presence somebody said well you know that's just not my gift it's okay there's probably a hundred other things that ain't your gift but you need to know how to pray the worst thing in the world is call on a brother or sister in the church and say pray for them and they say hold on let me call the bishop Am I right? God, you got to have. If you remember in the text, the setting, there was a famine in the land. One, made, one man prayed the prayer. God shut up the heavens. And now the same man is standing in front of 450 prophets of Baal, red, looking for the fire to fall. And then he calls for the people unto himself. And the Bible says that he repairs the altar, which was broken down. Can I tell us, if we expect the fire to fall, our altars cannot be broke down. If our altars are not built right, here we go, then we'll end up sending up strange fire. Just because you can talk in tongues, Bishop, don't mean the altar's right. Just because you can prophesy the paint off the wall and tell people what their license plate number is, don't mean the altar's right. As me and Brother Godwin's favorite statement, if Jesus can use a donkey, a bush, and a rooster, he can use us. So just because something looks all right, don't mean it's all right. Let me tell you, that old Bible says they're going to know you by the, not how you can call people out, and I'm cool with that. Not how you can, you know, articulate the word of God or how you can sing or play. The Bible said they're going to know you by the fruits. All right? We want protection in our home. We want protection for our family. We want protection for our church. We want the power of God in us. But if we want that, our altars cannot be broken down. You have to have a strong altar in your life to make it in this world. You need to ask. And I, 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 I listen, today on the plane, I'm studying, I'm, I'm redoing, and I'm typing, and I'm, and I'm thinking, and I can't spell, and it's ma- making me mad, and I'm, I'm trying to do it, and I can't get Siri because there ain't no internet on the plane because it was broken. I'm mad about that too. And, and I was just thinking, but I, listen, I started asking myself, what kind of altar, David Smith, do you have in your life today? It's easy to ask somebody else, what kind of altar you got? But, man, I'm going to tell you, you get in that old mirror and say, hey, I'm talking to you. And you said, what? Ask yourself, what kind of altar do I have in my life? What what kind of what kind of walk with God do I truly have in my life? What 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 am I what is my 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 purpose? What is my 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 goal? What is the thing that, that makes me tick? Somebody asked me Sunday, Brother Smith, what's your hobby? I said, ooh, you ready? He goes, yeah. I said, you see them 34 that just talked in tongues for the very first time? He says, yeah. I said, that's my hobby. I said, I ain't against golf. I just don't play it. I ain't against hunting. Got all the guns. I can't wait for them to come in my yard and say, Went on vacation. 
Everybody said, y'all going skiing? I said, hmm. Well, it wasn't my vacation. It was somebody else's vacation. They just asked me to go with them. So I said, all right. They said, you going to go do this? I said, hmm. They, they said, you going to do this? They said, hmm. They said, what you going to do? I said, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to drink coffee and watch y'all. <laughs> and then she said, and then what else you going to do? I said, I'm going to work on my sermon for Sunday. <laughs> I said, because my hobby's coming up in a few days. Now, I know everybody ain't like me, and you, and you better not be like me, and you can't be like me, because when they made me, that was it. Jesus said, oh, my Lord, that's enough there. <laughs> I told somebody the other day, God's got a sense of humor. If you don't believe me, look at your neighbor. And, boy, that was mean, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, listen, you got to ask yourself, what kind of altar? The father's altar of the lost son, which we would know it as the prodigal, which is not in the Bible, it's called the lost son. But anyway, the father altar looking for the lost son was prepared in fact you see all he said is he said bring that fatted calf here and kill it the word kill in that instant it meant on an altar the bible says that that lost son didn't come back to the father's house said he came back to the father Ooh. so if an altar listen if an altar has not been prepared then what Ever you send up will not be accepted by him. It'll just be smoke in God's face. It will be just another unanswered prayer. Man, when you got an altar and a relationship with the Lord, he loves to do for his people. I'm almost done. I, I wrote down some examples. I was going back through and some places that I've, I've been and I've, I've been in the churches and I've been in among the people and just know, know the way that, that, that they operate and the, and the prayer and the fasting uh, that goes on. I mean, literally, uh, daily in this church. I went with Brother Huntley and, and he was taking me here and we prayed here and I got here and I lived in a little camping trailer and it was me and and my wife and my, and my daughter, and we were running out of propane, and that lady across the street said, Yo, we, I'm going to help you out. And he said, and then I taught her a Bible study and won her to the Lord, and she still sits here in my church. And he said, and I prayed, and I built altars, and I, and I prayed, and I begged, and I asked God. And then all of a sudden, Brother Huntley tells me, he said, you know, we're going to do uh, 10 uh, crusades. He said, and we're going to start uh, 10 churches. And, and we begin to pray because, see, he had prepared the altar. And the mayor comes and gets the Holy Ghost. And then all her family shows up that evening. And they all get the Holy Ghost. And then they said, hey, here's what we're going to do. You, this town is yours. We ain't never had nothing like this. said, whatever you want to do in this town, we're going to be a part of it because he had built an altar. Built, built an altar. Brother Gene Easterland and I, you know Brother and Sister Easterland, I went there, they only had 22 people, and uh, they really, to be honest, it's not out of school. If he was here, he'd tell you. They absolutely didn't know what they were doing. And uh, he said, Smitty, he calls me Smitty. Smitty, I need you to come in. I said, well, why you want me to come? He said, I got 22 people. I said, my Lord, you got too many. I said, what you want to do? He said, I, I want to I build a church. And I said, well, first things we're going to do is we're going to build altars. And I said, we're going to pray. And I said, I'll come and we'll just pray and hang out and see what Jesus it does and we got to pray and we got to build an altar and all of a sudden when we begin to pray uh, we begin to do outreach and then all of a sudden in that same Sunday the city councilman come and got the Holy Ghost and then the mayor come and got the Holy Ghost and they said listen we want you to start uh, uh, we want you to start doing stuff around the city he said I tell you what we're going to do we're going to take everybody in the jail and we're going to let them out <laughs> he said and they're going to come help you and he said well let's do some block parties and I said yeah let's do it so we got there we had 22 people we started doing a block party. Before you know it, we had 84 get the Holy Ghost, and we baptized 10 in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And the next day, we started a church, another church, with him with only a few, and we had 17 in the other church. You say, how's that happen? Building altars. You, you, you say, I'm not talking about going out and starting another church. I'm not talking, but I'm talking about us right here saying, you know what? I'm going to build my altar. I'm going to get myself ready. I'm going to prepare myself because the influx that comes to this house, I'm going to have myself ready because I'm going to be able to help mentor and mother and father these people that are coming through the doors. You say, is it going to happen? 
It's going to happen. You think it's going to happen? I know it's going to happen. You say, how do you know it? Because God don't lie. I'm telling you, the Lord is going to help us. Brother Sarton, the Lord is going to help us. In the last few months, there's been such a spirit of liberty in the church. There's been such a, a spirit of freedom in the church. I, I told him the last time I was here, I said, man, it feels good up in the house. And some people think feels good is because you got 500. No, no, no. Listen to me. I'd rather have 150 people than going to heaven than have 1,000 and only have 150 going to heaven. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is a good church, huh? Look at your neighbor say, if you don't know it, you're in a good church. Yeah, just go ahead and tell them. If you don't know it, you're in a good church. Is it a perfect church? Uh-uh. Are we getting that way? Oh, yeah. Are we ever going to be perfect? Mm-mm. Not until he says we're going to be. But I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to be a praying church. I said we're going to be a praying church. We're going to be a church that takes it outside the four walls, and we're going to tell people, you can come down to the church, but I can pray for you right here, and you can get whatever you need right here. You can get whatever you want right here. But out of doing that and out of being the church and having an altar, God is going to let prophecies, going to let words from the Lord, going to let visions and dreams come to pass right here in this house. It's going to happen. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. You don't never know. You don't never know who, 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 who God's going to send. You, you don't never know who God's going to put in our path. We, we, we don't never know how the Lord works it out. But I've learned something. God blesses people that work for him. You, 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 there's no way around that. God blesses people that work for him. As old Papa used to say, he says, Jesus, Bubba, takes care of his regular customers. Jesus takes care of his regular customers. So you know what I'd like us to do today? Just right where we're at, a few moments. I just want us to, in a few moments, I just want us to raise our hands. And I just want us to tell the Lord, Lord, I'm willing to be a vessel. I'm willing to repair the altar. I'm willing, God, to make sure that I build my altar, not just in this house, but outside this house. I need, Lord, to spend more time with you. I know that sounds hard for some, and I know it sounds rough for some, but, it, it, I, boy, it's going to sound rude, but even in a good church, it's amazing the little time we spend with the master. So you know what? If somehow, just get up five minutes earlier than you have to and say, all right, Jesus, for this next four minutes and 30 seconds, I'm giving it all to you. Just tell him, here I am, God. I, I need you, Lord. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I'm, I'm telling you from experience what's going to happen. There's going to be a desire that comes to you. And there's going to be a desire, desire that gets in you that you're going to desire to spend more time with the master. If you pray all day, man, I, I want to learn. You know what? If you pray 20 seconds, I want to learn. I've learned, so. I, I'm telling you, I've learned one thing. Ain't no such bad thing as bad praying. Man, if you can just open your mouth and say, here I am, Lord. I tell the Lord every day, Bishop, make me, Lord, with your hands and not the hands of man. I don't want to be made with the hands of man. I want to be made with the hands of the master. I know it's a little different tonight. You say, why, why, why are we doing this? Because here's why. We could have, I'm telling you, we could have an influx of people. And this is going to sound bad, but we don't need babies training babies. We need adults training babies. And I say that, I'm talking about in the spirit realm. 
And I believe, Bishop, I love this place. You know that. Y'all know that. I love this place. I believe that the Lord is going to send us the harvest we can handle. And you say, why you say that? I know it's, the word ain't a cool word, but Jesus don't believe in abortion. He just don't. And he ain't going to send us babies that we'll just lay. I'm talking about new. He ain't going to send us new people that we're just going to lay on the altar and say, oh, look how beautiful, and not do nothing with them. Jesus said, I'm going to send you the people that you're willing to take care of. Huh? We need altar in our life, don't we? Huh? Let's raise our hands all over the building right here. God, I'm asking you right now. Come on, I'm asking you to pray now, West Bank, if you'll just do it. Just talk out to the Lord and just tell him whatever you need from him right now. God, I'm believing and standing upon that word. God, I know that you're the only one that can do it, Lord. You're the only one that can make it, God. I'm asking you, Lord, to let my prayer life, God, be an example, God. God, I'm asking, God, that every person that begins to pray and begins to talk and begins to commune with him, God, that whatever time limit, it's not about time limit, God. It's about the actual moving into, God, the rim that they can commune with you and hear from you. And I'm asking you, Lord, right now to begin to, there's some you might just want to shake a little bit and wake them up a little bit and say, hey, I'm asking you to talk to me today. I'm asking you to talk to me tonight. I'm, I'm asking you to go a little bit further with me in your prayer time. I, I'm telling you, Wes, bank i want us to get ready the lord is going to open a floodgate and a window of heaven to us that we're going to be mightily 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 used of the lord in this end time and in this last day i'm telling you it's going to come it's going to happen it's going to make place god is going to help us make place for people that want to be saved and so i'm asking you lord right now for the favor of the lord god to rest on every person and i know god that we got west bank family that are watching online and i'm asking god for an angel of the lord to go into their home right now god or go to their workplace or maybe even someone god that might be watching tonight online god let them repair their altar god i'm asking right now to let it happen god in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, believing and standing upon that word, asking you, Lord God, if it's appropriate, why don't you just reach over and take your neighbor by the hand if you came with him or you're riding with him or you know and you feel comfortable. Just pray for him right now. Hallelujah. Just pray for him right now. Come on, I want you to pray until you talk in tongues. I want you to pray until you speak in tongues. You say, well, man, it's Wednesday night. It's okay. It's the same tongue on Wednesday as it is on Sunday. Come on, I want you to pray until you talk in tongues. I want you to pray in the Spirit right now. Come on, some of you men of God that know how to pray in the Spirit, I'm asking you to get a hold of him right now. Some of you women of God that know how to call out in the Holy Ghost, huh? I'm asking you to get a hold of him right now. We got family members that need to come back to this house. We, we got friends and neighbors that need to come back to this house. We got people that have never been here that need to be in this house. Come on, I want us to pray for a moment. That's right, come on, I want us to pray for a moment. I want us to believe that Jesus is doing it in this house right now. God, I believe, stand upon that word. No one like you, no one beside you, Holy Ghost. God, I'm believing, God, I'm standing upon that word, Lord. You let your spirit flow. You let your spirit move. You let your spirit, come on, there's a shift in the atmosphere right now. I hate to say it, but the average Pentecostal church can't even pray 30 seconds. Uh, it's so sad. Uh, but we need to break through and say, you know what? You say, well, I'm, I'm running out of stuff to say. Just say the name Jesus. I, I know I joked a little bit about it, but just say the name Jesus. Uh, say, God, help me. Uh, get your Bible out and quote some scripture. Just do something in the Holy 
Holy Ghost. Uh, let there be a moving in the spirit right now. Hey, 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 I'm a Sunday. Uh, envision uh, your church uh, being full. Envision uh, your ministry moving. Uh, envision uh, something happening in the Holy Ghost. Uh, God, I give you honor. I give you praise. Uh, I give you glory. Uh, I thank you, God. Uh, I magnify you, Lord. Uh, I lift you up, God. Uh, God, I enter into your gates with thanksgiving. Uh, your courts with praise. Uh, Lord, be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, Satan, I want you to know you have no power. You have no dominion. Uh, you are a liar. You are a deceiver. Uh, some of you need to speak. My family will be saved. Uh, my business will be blessed. Uh, my finances will be blessed. Uh, my church uh, will be blessed. Uh, you need to open your mouth. Uh, you need to speak it in the heavens. Uh, you need to say it in the heavens. Uh, you need to believe that it's going to happen. There's liberty in this house right now. There's anointing in this house right now. I'm dispatching angels from this place right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, go to the lost God, go to the hurting God, go to the rich, the poor, the maimed, the halt, the withered. Show them your power, God. Show them your power, God. Let it be done, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be done, Jesus. Let it be done. Let it be done. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Nikande ye shende ye hi o no no mo ha Na re ya ni a no no ni e o mo no ni a kande ye ye ya na ya na ma ha Go re ya bo shonde ya Sweet Holy Ghost Sweet Holy Ghost Sweet Holy Ghost You do it God you do it, God. You do it, God. This is a praying church right here. You do it, God. Show yourself strong, God. We're ready. We're ready, God. We're willing and able, God. We want to do it, Jesus. Sweet Holy Ghost. Sweet Holy Ghost. Give him a hand clap of praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not on a team, join up with a team. Let's 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 make let's make March Madness in the middle of all the madness. Let's make it a great month. And then from that, let's just continue. I'm gonna just tell you something. Once you start doing something and you see the results and you get it down pat, you know, it's like, it's like building something. You try to build something, you never really built it, but once you do it and then, you know, you do it again, you do it after a while, it just, it's like clockwork. And what's going to happen is, is outreach, I'm telling you, and in reach. It's, it's just going to become a lifestyle. It, 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 I'm telling you, it's going to consume you. You say, what? Yeah. Yeah. I try to tell people about Jesus every day. Every day. And so, you know what? And I've just learned. Just, just do what he does. Just be like him. You don't got to be a theologian to say, would you like to come to my church? Would you like me to pray for you? Is there something you want? So if you're not on an outreach team yet, 
find one of our team captains and say, hey, I want to start going with y'all. But while that's going on, team captains, remind your team, it's in reach every day. Bring them on every day. And at the end, we're going to have fun and cut up. and Especially Brother Tripper, he really enjoys that. Yeah, yeah. I remember one year I was here. I heard him tell him, he said, I'll tell you all right now, if y'all bring some people, I'm bringing y'all out for Mexican food. I thought, I'm on that team. I like Mexican food. That was cool that day. I like it. Bishop, anything else you want us to do? Look at your neighbor say, I love you. See, because you love one another in this church. All right. All right. Uh, God bless you. It's a little after 8 o'clock. I think I went a little over. And... Uh, we're going to be all right. So uh, Saturday outreach is going to be phenomenal. The youth are going out. You know how they are. They Man, they're going to have the time of their life. They're crazy. So they'll have so much fun. And then Sunday, uh, let's just plan on uh, whatever Jesus does is going to be all right. Uh, the next few weeks, we're not, we're not, I'm not a master peace preacher anyway, so we won't have to worry about that one. But we're not, we're not trying to preach masterpieces for the next few weeks. We're trying to reach for the souls, the harvest. If there's one, that's who I'm going for. If there's ten, that's who I'm going for. If something goes crazy and there's a hundred, that's who I'm going for. We're going to have fun. The church is going to be blessed. But the, the next few weeks, we're going to focus on Holy Ghost, baptisms, signs and wonders and miracles. Oh, we okay for the next few weeks. In Jesus' name. Give him a hand clap. You dismiss. And God bless you. In Jesus' name.